no less station owner would take no less than 553,000 before taxes. So it appears in the world of ZOPAs that there's no ZOPA, at least initially, right? So it made it very difficult, which is why I told you that I would encourage you to be creative in this particular case. So no ZOPA. Now, one thing to ask is, what's the difference between the station owner's BATNA and the bottom line? So the station owner uh, had another offer, okay, from another company, and I believe, I can't remember right now, I thought it was BP for 400K. So if you notice, in the last negotiation with Texoil or with Biofarm Celtech, the BATNA very much drove the resistance point or the bottom line. So in Biofarm Celtech, the, because the BATNA was uh, 400K, technically the station owner should take 401K or greater. Okay, but the difference is that it was the interests, that is, let me put it over here, the interest in going on a two-year trip that drove the 553000 that the station owner really wanted. So notice, even though there's usually a high correlation between the BATNA and the bottom line, there's not always. What really drives people's resistance points, or the points at which they'll walk away, are their interests. So the station owner's interest that was driving all this was to go on this trip because um, the, the um, owner and his spouse were very tired, they needed to break, and as a consequence wanted to sell the station. Now, um, for Texoil, arguably to build, or excuse me, to buy another station. Okay, that was the BATNA, was technically the BATNA. But notice that the Texoil rep was only allowed to pay, rep could only pay up to 500K. So the bottom line, the resistance point, was not the 675 that was the BATNA, but rather the 500. The difference between those was the fact that Texoil uh, would have to build a mini mart for 100K and do pump and other upgrades. Up Grades. Okay. So, there we go. All right. So that 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 ultimately determined Texoil's resistance point. So to be sure, it's not always just the BATNA, the best available alternative. It's ultimately the interest. And in this case, Texoil had an interest in having a mini mart and upgraded uh, material or equipment. So that drove their bottom line. So now the question was, you know, for those people who were able to come to an agreement on what seems to be ultimately distributive, how could you get past it? And the answer is, for one, by creating or introducing more issues. The classic way to make this work was for the Texoil rep to offer the station owner a job upon and and uh, his or her spouse on upon return. So not only then does it become about the price of the station, but a job afterwards. So it introduces two two issues and allows the uh, station owners to go on their trip and bring more value. And what's hidden the silver lining in the way the rule reads or the hidden um, the hidden gem in Texoil's role is that the, um, the role player is the VP of operations who would typically be in charge of managing the service stations. Thus, arguably, because he or she is the VP of operations, it would be within the scope of his or her job to actually hire the station owners back as managers once they returned. So that could be one thing. Um, let me go to another hypo let me give you a hypothetical, another one. So say Texoil agreed to pay 480,000, which was 20,000 better than their bottom line. The station purchase price years ago and the upgrades cost 120,000. So if you subtract the uh, price and upgrades from the sales price, you have the station owner's capital gain times 360 times the 15% capital gains tax, 
was 54,000 in the tax. So 480, the original sales price minus 54, the tax means that the station owners would receive 426,000. They needed to get 488,000. So there was a difference of 62,000 that they needed to have if this deal was to work. So often people just end with, I don't know what to do. But instead, you could come up with any number of creative options. So as one example, and I'm sorry this does this over here, um, Texoil might be able to offer a loan for boat repairs. Give them a loan that would allow them to bridge that gap with the $60,000. Um, they might actually, Texoil might actually hire the station owners during their two-year process and give them health care. Um, they might give them uh, $13,000 worth of gas for the boat they might, again, give them job a job afterward. They could do any number of things to try and bridge this gap. But the key is, again, that you introduce additional issues that allow to bridge the gap in the first place. Okay. So the question was, the issue here in terms of building, uh, making this happen was you had to start in your role play to start revealing information to each other because ultimately it becomes clear that it's a standstill. It's not going to happen. So ultimately, the best thing that could happen would be for Texoil to say, I just need to understand why are you leaving? Uh, why are you selling your station? And they would say, well, we're actually going on this trip and we've already figured out our expenses and we need to get 553000 before taxes to go on this two-year trip. So it's the interest. Remember, the station owner's position would be, I won't take less than 553 before taxes. But the interests are all these costs associated with going on this two-year trip and the two-year trip in and unto itself. So the key is you needed to reveal information to each other. The text oil could say, you know, we really need, we really want to buy this from you. Um, it's going to cost us $675, but we can't pay that much because we think that we need a mini mart, etc. So the key is what information did you reveal? If you started revealing information, re your interests and priorities, you could win because it's not going to make you vulnerable at this point to say what your interests and priorities are. And that is one way to get to integrative outcomes is to start sharing. You don't want to share your bottom line. If the station owner said, oh, our best alternative is $400,000 from BP or whichever um, company it is, then Texoil can take advantage of that and basically say, you know, we'll, we'll give you 401000 in which case, ultimately, there wouldn't even be a, a deal anyway, because technically the station owners should say no. Okay, and what role, excuse me, I had to get my, my ears unplugged. What role does trust play? How did you gain it? The key is that trust is necessary to build these integrative negotiation agreements, and by that you need to share interests, information on interests and priorities. So to be sure... In order to create win-win opportunities, there are a number of tactics. One is to approach the situation as a problem to solve mutually. As one example, we know, and I believe, well, it's in a classic book called Win-Win um, win Negotiation. And um, it, is, it discusses, and, and Getting to Yes, excuse me, that's another book. Getting to Yes is a worldwide bestseller on negotiation. Even when you think about it, when you negotiate, you usually sit on the other ta side of the table as the person. However, if you sat side by side with that person and said, listen, let's start talking about the cost that the station owner is going to experience and work to find creative solutions, just by sitting next to each other, you shift the um, framing as competitors to people, collaborators who are trying to solve a problem mutually. So just sitting arrangements in negotiation matter. Taking an interest-based approach is critical, and that again gets to that other article you read, investigative negotiation. Um, so for example, if your landlord, if you wanted a dog in your apartment, and your landlord said, you can't have a dog, that is his or her position. What you want to get to are the underlying interests that tell you why the person won't let you have a dog in your apartment. So if you said, well, why can't I have a dog? The person could say, well, I'm worried that the dog will shed. And anybody who rents the apartment in the future who has an allergy to dogs, 
couldn't um, it couldn't live there.